Hi, this is Mike Lawless, and in this video, I'll discuss getting started with AdMet Predictor. This next slide outlines some of the items I'll discuss in the video. I'll start kind of at the top of the AdMet Predictor interface and discuss the pull-down menus. Also show different options for the help file and help you view the license status. Next, I'll discuss the quick access icons that are just right below the pull-down menus, specifically talking about uh, the settings and the preferences. Then next, I'll open up a structure file and discuss the different file types that can be open. Once that's read in, I'll discuss uh, some of the spread scene controls, which are the widgets kind of on the left-hand side of the interface. I'll discuss creating graphs, go down to the bottom of the interface, talk about the different tabs for the modules, and show how you can create a custom tab to hold your information. Next, I'll talk about manipulating the rows, hiding and unhiding, and sorting them. Similarly, I'll then talk about uh, manipulating the columns and the different types of columns you can have. Two examples are star plots and heat maps. I'll also talk about the atomic properties windows then go on to importing structures and attributes, adding new compound attributes, inserting and editing structures with MedChem Designer, and then finish up with a discussion of querying uh, the spreadsheet, either in text queries, uh, using the query wizard, or performing subsection searches. Okay, so let's get started with AdMet Predictor. I've opened up AdMet Predictor version 9.5, and uh, I'll start up here at the top. So we have uh, pull-down menus, starting with File, Edit, View, Data, Chemistry, Tools, Design, Library, and then finally the Help menu. So with our Help menu, we have three options to kind of view the user manual. The first one is the standard Microsoft help file. So in this case, you have contents listed here. You can open these and go to a specific section in the manual. Uh, we have an index, uh, which would be you know, typically towards the back of a user manual. You can double click on a, um, a topic and just display uh, some of that information associated with the, the index there. Uh, you can also perform searches such as S plus SW. So that's our uh, solubility model. And uh, for each of the models we have in AdMet Predictor, you get an observed versus predicted plot, along with the statistics for regression models. And for classification models, you'll get uh, information about the size of the training set, the number of positives, the total number of compounds, total correct, uh, and then the concordance sensitivity and specificity for each one of those models. Then you can also view the uh, manual in PDF version. Uh, so this is just simply a PDF reader uh, of the manual. Again, you have the different options to search, etc. And then finally, the other way you can read the manual is to look at an HTML uh, file. So. This one uh, opens my browser and goes to the specific file. You could then bookmark this page. The last item I want to talk about under the Help menu is the View License Status button. So this will bring up a dialog box with all the licenses or features you have licensed, the number of users, and then the total number available, and the expiration date. So this is uh, important information. Uh, so right below the pull-down menu are what I call these quick access icons. Uh, so you have things like uh, open and save, undo and redo. So these two commands are, are pretty important as you're working with the program. Uh, we have things to find, uh, build charts, open up AdMet Modeler, etc. Uh, the one I want to detail first is the settings, uh, which is kind of like a gear uh, display here. Uh, so this has several tabs. I just want to show the how I've got the display tabs or the display setup. Uh, by default, this is going to be off. Use bold structures. And the reason I like to use the bold structures is it gives a little bit thicker bonds. Also, uh, by default, color hetero atoms is, is turned off, but I like to turn that one on so I can see the different colors of the, the compounds. If we go back into general, just uh, when we read in a compound, the program will, by default, automatically remove uh, all the smaller substructures. With QSAR modeling, you can just model one compound at a time. You can't really model the, the salt or the 
component or mixed component there. But if you want to see these initially, you would have to or, or click the button that says do not remove fragments. And this will bring a whole molecule in together instead of separate fragments. And this can help you kind of look at the uh, structures as uh, whoever created that file wanted you to. So we can come back to some, some of the settings. Just open up a file. And there's various uh, file formats that are uh, accepted. Uh, SD, MOL, RDF, and then also what we call uh, SMI. XTK and CTK are proprietary uh, formats. Uh, specifically, the XTK is what saved the files under. Uh, and that kind of saves all the graphs, and et cetera, within the uh, folder. Uh, if I go to the C drive, and go to the your username app data local uh, directory. Under that, there's a uh, folder called Simulations Plus, and then under that is Admin Predictor 9.5. And the typical file we kind of open up is this demo2d.smi. So this is a, a Smiles file uh, that's in the that comes loaded with the program. So you can go ahead and open it up. When you do, uh, it's going to give two prompts, one for the name of the uh, field that holds the smiles. In this case, it's just called smiles. And then the compound identifier field, which in this case is, is name. So we typically want every compound in the spreadsheet to have a unique name. Uh, so it's important to try and try and name them uniquely. Uh, down here is just a preview of the file. Now in the first column here is the smiles uh, string second column is the name of the compound and then you have additional data melting point cast number experimental log p experimental solubility and experimental uh, passive uh, path now by default uh, we're going to load all the compound attributes if you had a really large sd file with say thousands of attributes you might want to not load those and then maybe in a later step import those the first row in this uh, uh, file is a header line, so we want to skip that, but it will read that uh, in, in, in order to get the column names. And then this is a tab delimited text file. If it was just a uh, white space, you could turn this off and everything with the space would be treated as a, a delimitator. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Uh, that reads the uh, molecules into the spreadsheet, creates an image of the uh, smiles file. Uh, let me go back to the preferences really quickly and then go in the display. So I'm going to turn off the bold display and I'm not going to color hetero atoms. So this is what you would get if you did that. Um, and I just, you know, it's just a preference. So I prefer to use the, the bold structure and color the hetero atoms here. So we have our unique identifiers here, and then we have the fields that we brought in. It also adds an AP formula weight. Now, the reason it adds this is if there were salts or uh, multiple component compounds in here, and it had removed a piece of that, you may still need that to calculate the, the formula weight for the overall compound. So we keep that formula weight. We save that once it's uh, read in. Over on the left side of the uh, graphical user interface are the spreadsheet controls. So here I can control the, uh, the height of each one of the rows. And this will just, for larger molecules, allow you to see more detail within the molecule. Pin columns uh, is this black line here. So anything that's pinned to the left of here will stay in its position no matter what tab we're in. So that's, that's something important to manipulate. Then we have a tile view. So if we click on the tile view, it will, of course, make these into kind of a grid. We can double click on any one of the headers and then define up to four other uh, uh, measurements or, or fields we'd like to see within the um, uh, up on top of, of, of each molecule. So I'm going to go ahead and click go back to the table view. Then we have four, three widgets here, which allow you to filter the data. So let's pick just something like molecular weight. We can either use these scroll bars uh, to pinch in. You can also move the range fully like this. And then as a third option, you could just type in a number 100 and then say so we want to go to 300. Now, as you're doing this, fewer and fewer compounds are going to be displayed in the spreadsheet. There's a status bar down in the lower right-hand corner that said currently 62 compounds are, are 
unhidden or displayed, uh, 42 have been hidden. And then if we turn this uh, filter off, uh, we go back to the status and now it says zero or hidden. And you can define up to three different uh, properties to filter on here. There's a little button here that looks like a push pin. And if I click on that, the spreadsheet column gets collapsed. If I hover over it, uh, then it will uncollapse and we'll be able to see everyone and manipulate it. You could then pin it again and uh, perform some manipulations and then unpin it, for example. So I typically leave that unpinned. Now going down to the, uh, on the right-hand side here, we see just a couple of graphs that are uh, put up by default. We have a distribution graph and a scatter graph by default. Again, that's within the, the settings. So we can go into uh, settings and you'll see what's going to be displayed as far as the plot. So charts displayed on startup. You can um, change that to, to others. Again, we have the push pin that you can uh, um, pin the uh, column. So to give you more, or excuse me, the plots in order to give you more room within the spreadsheet. Now, these plots also are, can be uh, undocked, so you have to pin it first and then undock it, and then you can resize the plot to any size. There's also export functionality and some different things in here. Now, something, sometimes these can, get, can go in different places. You're not sure where they are. Uh, you can come to view uh, doc charts in main window, so when you click on that, it will return them to their correct position over here and have them docked in. You could also move these around. Uh, you know, you could be fit it at the top if you want it over here on the left side, uh, and then down at the bottom is also an, an option there. Uh, typically, I would just dock them in uh, the main window and then pin them uh, over so that they're they're not showing. You can also add graphs under the uh, data, add new chart. Uh, so what this would do, let's say if I specify a 3D chart, it's just going to add the chart. And then under here, under this control, you can specify what you want to see in that plot. Okay, now I'll calculate some properties and then discuss the module tabs at the bottom of the interface. So I typically click on the uh, Add Met button and then we'll just select all the defaults and click on Calculate. This will calculate all the properties and display uh, star plots in here. And what I wanted to emphasize were these uh, tabs down here at the bottom. So uh, obviously the All button will display all the properties, uh, including the user inputs. Uh, the next tab will only display the ones that were input from the file or other attributes you might add during the se uh, session. The uh, PhysChem are going to be all the uh, properties associated with the PhysChem and biopharmaceutical module. Metabolisms are modules next. Toxicity. So this is just a way that properties are then displayed in the spreadsheet. Uh, we have the simulation tab. Now, if you click on something that's not been computed, uh, it's going to prompt you asking you if you want to calculate those properties. For, for that, I'll say uh, no. Uh, then we have over 300 uh, molecular descriptors that uh, are in this descriptor tab. Uh, some of the important ones are, or some of the topological ones are towards uh, the right side. And uh, these are these T underscore ones. So one popular one, of course, is the uh, polar surface area uh, based on the 2T top topology. User models, I've got a couple user models that I've defined here that I built with Advent Modeler, and those are our, there. Uh, the second to last tab says risks. So these are the ADMET risks, the absorption risks, uh, rule of five, SIP risks, etc. So that's a nice information under that. Now the next button or the next tab here is customize. So if you click on that, it's going to bring up this dialog box here. If there are current buttons that you've already customized, you could click on those and then add additional attributes or properties. So in order, you could modify that button. I'm just going to uh, click the add button and then uh, give it a name for my props and then click OK. So now that's filled here. And then I would just go through here and define any 
uh, properties I wanted to see in that tab. And a lot of them are in the S plus. So I can click on my keyboard, click the uh, S button, and it'll go down to the, the S's for these. So let's pick out just a few of these. Let's do passive um, gastric fluid and intestinal fluid, uh, log D, log P, PEF is a very important property, obviously, and uh, S plus SW, which is the solubility. So I'll move over all these over here. Uh, I could add more. Now, if I make a, if I hold down the control key, it'll just continue on that selection. Uh, if I click a button up here and then hold the shift and click down here, uh, it will highlight all those. So it's kind of the standard uh, Microsoft Office or Microsoft keyboard. Uh, pads. So now when I click OK, uh, it adds this property up here. If I click on that, uh, it's going to show the spreadsheet uh, just for those uh, columns that uh, I've added under my customized tab. And this is a really good way for just looking at properties. As you know, we have over 140 predicted properties and over 300 descriptors. So it's good that we have a lot of different mechanisms to hide and uh, show just the information that you want. Next, I'd like to talk about manipulating rows. Uh, you can select a row simply by clicking on the image or basically any cell uh, in the spreadsheet. Uh, the place you cannot click is this gray area over here. That doesn't do any good. Once a row is selected, you can uh, go over to the gray area here and drag it uh, to a different position. So just drag it to the top, for example. Uh, you can also select multiple rows by holding down the uh, control key. And then later on in the video, I'll show how to select rows via query. Now, once you've selected the rows, you can right click and use this move menu option either to move it to the bot top. So this will move all the other, uh, other rows to the top. Uh, you can move to the bottom or you can move above a reference. Now, if you click above a reference, it's going to ask for uh, a row to be the reference number. So let's give it row six and now it'll move those just above row six. We can also go to the view button and hide unhide and hide the selected uh, rows or hide the unselected. So this is one I use a lot of times. If I've selected rows, I'll use control shift H to hide everything except the rows I've selected. So let's do that. And now you see only these, uh, the three rows that were selected. You can also, once things are hidden, this menu option, unhide all, will become available and you can unhide everything or bring it back into the view. Uh, again, these uh, shortcuts I use quite a bit. So uh, I'll use control alt hide to hide what's selected, control shift H, which will hide uh, what's not selected, and then control alt U, which will unhide everything uh, and bring it into the main spreadsheet. We can also sort the spreadsheet based on any column. We can sort it in ascending order or descending order. So let's go to our user inputs so we can look at the experimental solubility. If we click once on a column header, it sorts it in ascending order. Uh, click an another time, it sorts it in descending order. And then finally, if you click a third time, it will unsort the, the column. Now, you can also do hierarchical sorts. So if you have a column that potentially would have ties, so the same number in two consecutive rows, we could sort that. And then if we hold down the control button, uh, we can sort another column uh, relative to that one. So any areas where these two cells would be the same, uh, it would sort this other column or sort these other rows according to uh, a hierarchical system. Then uh, if you ever have to uh, restore the original order, you can go up to data, uh, restore original row order, and that'll put everything where it was when you first read in the file. The next topic is column manipulation and column types. Similar to rows, you can simply uh, select a column and drag it anywhere uh, in the spreadsheet. Now, if you kind of put it on the right side of the column. It's going to put it after the column. You're dragging it to it. Uh, if you put it on kind of the left-hand side, it'll uh, place it before that. Another thing that uh, is very helpful is pinning columns. So let's say we're 
want to see molecular weight as kind of the first column over here next uh, to the left of the bold line. The important thing about this is once you pin a column here, you can go to other um, views of the overall spreadsheet and this column will still be here. One of the things that's uh, difficult to learn is, uh, let's say you uh, arrange the columns how you want it uh, in the PhysChem tab, and then you go to another tab, say the Metabolism tab, and then come back to the PhysChem tab, it will be in the original order. So the only way to preserve that is to pin the columns. So if we want to move these two uh, over uh, here, uh, we can also right-click here and do what's called uh, set the pin line, so that moves the pin line over here. Now these three columns are pinned, and if we go to the Metabolism tab uh, and then back to the PhysChem tab, these will be in the same order. Another very useful feature is the View Arrange Columns, or I use Control-Alt-V uh, very often. It brings up this dialog box here, which will show on the right the current display of the columns and you can uh, select different uh, properties here, move them to the top, and then when you click OK, they would appear, uh, in this case, to the left of the structure column. Uh, so I'll just move that back. I always like the structures as the first column and the identifier as the second column. Also under the view, uh, arrange columns. Uh, you can add any column type. That's, this will list all the available columns over here on the left and you can simply add those to the block of, of visualized ones. They'll always go to the kind of the bottom of, of this list. And of course you can move them to the top and then you can move them down a, a few or to the bottom. And then we click OK, those will appear in here. Another way to simply add or uh, view a column is to simply right click on it and do set contents to a compound attribute. Uh, so now this will open up a, a dialog box where you can select any column attribute and then it will basically replace that column with that new column attribute. Next feature I'd like to discuss is the uh, type of the columns. So let's go back to our user inputs. We right click on a cell header and go down to set type and set it to real integer or text. What happens sometimes is that you'll read in some data and all the data will be real numbers except for maybe a, a few cells and those cells might have uh, text in it. So for example, if you have IC50 data and some of the values are greater than 10 micromolar, uh, so you've got the greater than 10, that's a textual type column and it will automatically define that as a text column. Uh, if you change that to real or integer, uh, what it will do is convert all the values to numbers if it can, and then any text, it will just leave blank in there. And then uh, another way to add a column uh, or rearrange the columns is to right click uh, and insert a column uh, compound attribute. So this is something that's already uh, in the spreadsheet, but it's not visible. Uh, so we would just select that and it's going to add it to right hand side of the, or excuse me, to the left of the column that was selected. Okay, next I'm going to talk about star plots. So this file uh, called autostarplots.star, auto star this is in your user app data local simulations plus admin predictor 9.5 directory and it defines how the automatic star plots are are created uh, so up at the top the first one we'll have is risk it'll include admat risk absorption risk SIP risk etc then we'll have one called pcb which will contain molecular weight uh, number of, of rotatable bonds uh, etc uh, then we have the sips uh, ugts um, etc all of these properties are defined relative to what's in the data set you're currently working with, except for these SIP clearance values. Uh, this nomenclature here means that we're going to take the log of the uh, clearance value, and it's going to be on a scale from 0 to 3.5. So instead of re being relative to the compounds in the data set, this will be a fixed scale going from 0 to 3.5. Okay, now let's see what this looks like in action. Again, I've read in demo2d.smi. I'll click the uh, 
add met button and calculate properties. So this calculates all the descriptors and then uses those descriptors uh, to produce the models. And then the first thing you'll see in the spreadsheet are the various risks. So we have the risk uh, or the admet risk, the absorption risk, et cetera, around this. And in order to look at these, you just simply hover your mouse button over that uh, to see the relative values. Uh, the next column is PCB, SIP substrate, clearance, et cetera. Uh, if you see hashed ones, this means that this particular uh, compound is out of scope for this model. So that's what the hashes mean. You can also create your own star plot. So I'm going to go to my props. And in this case, I've defined water solubility, log D, PEF, and uh, HLM clearance. The star plots from one of these properties will come up uh, also automatically. And I'm just going to right click and undisplay them uh, for this particular example. Now I can uh, right click on a column and then do insert column and choose star plot. Now here I'm gonna choose these four values from this um, list here. So I'll first go down to the C's and you can just click in there and uh, type the C on the um, keyboard and then it'll go to the, the top of the C's. So at the bottom of this list will be the uh, SIP HLM clearance. So I'm gonna select that and then add that over. Then again, I'm going to click over here and type the S's. So that goes me to, down to the S plus. I'm going to select log D, uh, hold down my control button and click on S plus PEF, hold down my control button again and go into the uh, aqueous water solubility. So these are defined up here now. Uh, I've given it my own name. I'm going to call it my props. For the SIP HLM clearance, it's going to be colored green. And I'm going to put that on a log scale. Then I'm going to go down to the log D. It's going to be blue, which is fine. PEF is going to be cyan. And then SW is yellow. Yellow is kind of hard to see. So I'm going to change that to uh, this brown color over here and then click OK. Now we've got all these defined. I click OK and we have the star plot uh, just for these properties listed here. So that's one way to uh, add your own specific properties and have a star plot. This allows you to quickly look at these uh, structures and see, you know, get a quick readout on the output properties. You can also right click here and uh, modify that plot. So again, we would bring up that dialog box again. So this is a very convenient way to kind of look at uh, different pro the properties you want to in a star plot. The next topic I'm going to cover is heat maps. Uh, so again, I've read in demo 2D and I've calculated all the properties. Now, when you create a heat map, it's only relative to whatever uh, tab you're in. So what I like to do is go to the all tab that will display all the properties. And then this button here is for creating heat maps. So I'll click on that and this will have all the properties available in the spreadsheet. I'm going to check all of them. Uh, you can color either with a red, yellow, green kind of stoplight uh, display or a blue, white, red uh, display. I'm going to stick with the red, green, yellow. So the red are going to be the lower values, yellow the medium, and then green the higher values. And it's a, a scale all the way from red to green. So I'll just click OK and this will color them. So if we look over here, here's our, here's our a heat map with everything uh, colored. Uh, if we sort on, let's see, uh, this particular one, we'll see that all the red ones uh, are at the lower end. Uh, click again to sort in descending order, and you'll see the green ones are the higher values. Now, sometimes you might want to reverse this. So, for example, log P, red usually means stop, and for here, I would think the lower values would be better uh, than the higher values. So what I'm going to do is uh, right click on the column header and I'm going to set the direction to descending. Now the values in green will, or the lower values will be green and the higher values will be in red. So that's something you could do, uh, reverse the colors for any, uh, any uh, particular property. Let's go over to the uh, toxicity values. Uh, uh, even in here, things that are uh, classification models will also be displayed in this red-green. So here we have 
Uh, the above will be green, the below will be red. Now, if we sort these and then we uh, select just all the ones that are above, so hold down the shift key and that'll select all of these rows. Again, I'll go into view, hide, unhide, and I'm gonna unhide selected. And what you'll see is that the colors have disappeared for this property. And this occurs because all of the values in there are the same. So it doesn't know what the color red and what the color green. Uh, so it just makes the white background. Uh, but if we go up back up again and view hide and unhide all, again, we'll get the colors back. So I use these colorings with, with everything I do. And it, it's very convenient for to get a quick uh, view uh, or visual on the plot. So it's a very good visual effect. Okay, the next topic I'm going to discuss is the atomic properties window. So in order to activate the menu, you see under tools, here is the uh, atomic properties. Now you see it's grayed out simply because nothing's selected right now. So I'm just going to hit control A and that will select all the molecules in the spreadsheet. Then go to the tools and click on atomic properties. So this will bring up the first molecule in the spreadsheet. And uh, we see here, this will show the structure only. We can get atomic uh, numbers, symmetry flags. So this is uh, label them according to the symmetry. So there's a plane of symmetry going through here. So atom one here and over here are symmetric. And then you can also view any of the other properties on here. So these are sites of metabolism and the kinetic properties. You can also look at AOX. So there's no uh, AOX sites for this molecule. We can also go into the electronic properties. Here we can see things like PO, PEOE uh, sigma charges, uh, Huckel atomic charges, etc. And you can display multiple ones here by holding down the control button and clicking on uh, the various buttons. So you see all the properties in one window. Then we also have these uh, uh, tools up here which allow you to advance. So this will advance to the next molecule, this will advance to the last molecule, and this will go to the first molecule. We can also copy this uh, image to the clipboard, then you can paste it into uh, any one of your particular programs uh, like Word or PowerPoint. Uh, the other option that I wanted to just show briefly is under tools, the shortcut for this is shift A. So if I select a molecule, I can click shift, shift A and that'll bring up the atomic properties and you, you can define these uh, for whatever you want. The next topic I'll discuss is importing structures and attributes. So for this particular one, I've split the demo 2D.SMI file into two parts, and I'm going to uh, read in the first one. So I'll do file open. Uh, this is the first part, this demo 2D-1, open structure file. I'm going to load all the compound attributes. Click OK. This is similar to what we've done before. And then go up to the menu and select file, import, compound structures. Now I'll choose the second half, which is the demo uh, dash 2D-2 file. Brings up the similar dialog box to the import. We can load all the compound attributes. Uh, click OK. Uh, this box comes up. Usually the default is to skip compounds with duplicate names. I'm going to uncheck that or leave that unchecked in this example. And it will import the other uh, half. So now we've got a total of 104 structures. And it also imported the attributes along with that. Now you notice there's a new column called AP import. And for the second file I uh, imported, it will have a value of one. If I was to import a third structure file, it would have a value of two in this field. Okay, next I'm going to import attributes. And for this example, I'm going to reopen the demo 2D. Uh, SMI uh, file. So I'll open that. Now this time I'm not going to load struct compound attributes because I want to read those in uh, from a file. So I'll click OK. Now it only adds the AP molecular weight column. I go under File, uh, Import, Compound Attributes. And here you have to choose, um, you can choose text files. You could also import it from an SD a PNO file, which is one of the files from the Abbott modeler, and an SOM file is also from 
uh, the Cajona map in Abbott Modeler. I'm going to click demo2d.txt. So this is a text file. And what's important about this is this is the first column needs to be the name of the molecules or the identifier in here. So it's going to try and match up these values with what's in the text field. Now, if there was a duplicate name, let's say I had a acetamide in this uh, text file twice, uh, it would pick up whatever the second value is. So the, the last value is what it's going to override, um, overwrite the first one. I'm going to select first line of the file contains column labels. So these are the labels up here. And then when I click next, we get a dialog box with the uh, various fields. We can choose to import them or not, and then the various types. So what I'm going to do here is just select one of these and edit the selected one. So this allows me to change the name, and I'm going to just change it to expare log D or log P. Uh, it's real values. Here we could change the order. So as I showed with the heat maps, uh, the direction can either be ascending or descending. The default is ascending. So I'll just leave that the same, and you see that I've changed this. If I double click on a, a particular column, it will switch it from importing to not importing. So we could import all these fields or import just a few of them by uh, selecting the note not to import. Uh, I'll just go ahead and import them all. Uh, so here I'll click finish. It imports all the structures. Now, here's a case uh, before where we have this experimental path because it was read in with these tildes. Uh, you'll see that the type is text. Uh, if I change this to real, you see that the text values are cleared out as blanks, and then the numeric values are turned into uh, uh, real values, so 4.3004 carbazepine. The next topic is adding new compound attributes. Again, I've read in demo2d.smi, and I didn't read in any attributes. So the first thing I want to do is create a solubility uh, column. So here I'm going to click on the AdMet property uh, icon, and I'm going to select all, uh, I'm only going to select the uh, PhysChem, and then I'm going to go in here to customize properties. I'm going to uncheck all, and then uh, scroll down to the S pluses, and click on uh, uh, S plus SW. This is the way to only have that column be calculated and added to the spreadsheet. So now that's in the spreadsheet. And if you right click on um, a column header, you can insert a column. And I'm going to discuss some of these new attributes here. So the first one is an equation attribute. So you can build an equation from a current attribute. In this example, I'm going to convert the uh, S plus SW, which is in milligrams per milliliter to molar units. Uh, so I'm going to name the attribute S plus SW dash M for molar. And then I'm going to take the uh, solubility in milligrams per liter or per, excuse me, per milliliter, uh, which is the same as grams per liter. So the way to convert this is simply to divide by the molecular weight. So double clicking on the attribute brings it up into the window. And this is where we're building our equation. Then I'm going to predict click on the slash uh, that will add a, a divisor essentially and then double click on the formula weight so that adds uh, the formula weight so it's the solubility divided by the formula weight and uh, you can see some of the other options here you can take the log the anti-log uh, the natural log then um, uh, an exponent uh, square it square root uh, take it to a, a power or uh, take the uh, reciprocal absolute value. So there's a lot of um, powerful features here you can uh, select. So when I click OK, it simply adds the column. And now we have a new attribute uh, that is the molecular or the uh, solubility in uh, molar units. And if you hover over that, it will give the equation for it. Uh, another thing you can define is uh, a new query attribute. And I'll talk about queries later, but uh, for the time being, I'm just going to use uh, um, a smarts query, which will be uh, an aromatic carbon and attached to a chlorine. So that is the uh, query. And then I'm going to call the new column name aromatic chlorine. When I click on that, it performs the query, uh, adds this column here. 
and then if we sort in descending order you can see that it's the number of these groups here so chlorine chlorine uh, three chlorines in, in several of these then uh, a single one there's somewhat two also the next one is a list attribute so i'll go in here and click insert column go down to new list attribute and this opens up another dialog box with uh, several options so formula weight number of atoms number of bonds number of rings number of components so this would be for things like salts that uh, were read in number of ring system size of the smallest ring i'm going to add something called size of the largest uh, ring so we just click that and this is going to be the attribute name ap underscore max ring uh, click ok and again, I'll sort on, on this value. So it's got a seven uh, membered ring. Then most of these others are six membered rings. Then a, another attribute you can add is a partition attribute. So when I add this, it brings up a dialog box. So uh, you choose your attribute here. We're going to leave it formula weight and it gives the range for this. So what I'm going to do is divide this into um, three or four different sections and uh, it will give a number for each one of these ranges so it'll be a simple number I'm going to add uh, AP and this is what the new attribute will be called so that's partition of the uh, AP molecular weight so let's add everything below let's say 150 will be defined as a zero uh, anything between 150 and 250 will give a value of uh, one and then anything over 350 will be given a value of two, et cetera. And click OK. And so this has added this new uh, attributes. It's a partition of another attribute. And that would allow you to color. So if we, if we do a heat map uh, of this, we could just click all. And then you'd see the lowest ones are in red, then orange, green, and then even a darker green here for the three. Uh, the next attribute I'll click on here is insert column. Uh, we're gonna skip conversion attribute and go to a new constant attribute. Now, typically when I do a constant attribute, let's say I wanna, I'm building a, a binary model and I want to have everything with a molecular weight below 250 in one category and everything with a molecular weight above 250 in another category. This is a kind of an odd example. Maybe if you had a property like uh, an IC50 and you wanted to separate it between things that were below 10 micromolar and above 10 micromolar and then build a classification model on that, this would be the way to do that. So what I normally do is simply here, I'll just sort the uh, molecular weights and then go down and uh, sort of them in ascending order and then go down and choose the ones that are below 250 molecular weight. So I would select those. And then if I right click on this and insert a column, uh, that's a new constant attribute. Here it's gonna prompt me, do I want uh, all spreadsheet rows or only the selected? I will choose the selected ones, uh, click OK. I'm gonna make it a text attribute and then say, uh, give it a, a name, molecular weight, and then say low for those. So I click OK, that adds that attribute. Now what I would do here is go under edit and invert the selection. So now it's gonna select everything that was not selected. And again, I would get, now I would go under data, add compound attributes uh, only to the selected, and then select again, constant attribute. And this brings up the same dialog box. Here I'm going to say high and then click there. So now we have the highs. Again, we could uh, color these attributes um, so by, to create a heat map. Uh, so this would create the heat map. If we go back into uh, the original row order, that gives a little bit more variability of that. Uh, so you can again pick out the low and mole high molecular weights. Or again, as I mentioned, you could create a classification model using these techniques. The next section I'll discuss is inserting and editing structures with MedChem Designer. The simplest way to input a structure into AdMed Predictor is to simply open up a blank window and then click on this MedChem Designer button, uh, which will open up MedChem Designer. Then you can simply sketch your molecule in and I'll just sketch something simple real quickly uh, and then move it back in uh, using this one of these two transfer arrows. The dialog box 
this dialog box will come up when you transfer the molecule. It says one compound will be transferred, and it'll be a new compound that'll be appended to the spreadsheet. And so it gets appended this way. It's called Molecule 1. That's the default name in there. And once you have a, a structure in AdMet Predictor, there are four ways to bring it into MedChem Designer. One is to simply double click on the structure. Another thing, if we have this highlighted, then we can just click the uh, MedChem Designer icon that will open it up. Uh, we can use Tools, MedChem Designer to open up MedChem Designer. And then the f last way is to use Shift D, and that'll open up and bring the molecule into MedChem Designer. Now, if I have something selected, but I hold the control key down and click on the icon, then it'll just open up a fresh window. So that's a way to maybe input a new molecule. Okay, so I typically use double click to open it. Now, um, the default here is to visualize the name when you roll your mouse button over it. Uh, that's defined by the settings here under format. And then it's either always uh, displayed, you could you can make it always displayed, so then the uh, structure is always, name is always displayed. I generally keep it uh, turned off, uh, like this for example, and then when I just mouse over it. Now, if you hold down the shift key and mouse over it, it'll give you the name, or if you have it selected and you mouse over it, it'll also tell you what the name of that structure is. Now, if I just want to modify this structure, would edit it, and then when I bring it back into AdMap Predictor, either using this, this button transfers it and keeps MedChem Designer open, this transfers and closes it, so that's typically what I'll do. And I didn't modify the name, so it was still Molecule 1, that means it's going to modify the structure. Okay, And it also, as you notice, adds this previous structure record here. Uh, if I double click on it and then I right click in here and I modify the name, let's just call it modify two, molecule two, uh, click OK. And then let's make sure we've got a little bit different structure here and then transfer it back. Now it says one com will be transferred and one will be appended. So now when we return to AdMet Predictor, you'll see that we have two molecules in the spreadsheet. So let's go back into MedChem Designer. I'll double click on the structure and show you just a few of the tools in here. So the first one is the lasso tool. You can either use a free lasso. I prefer to use this square lasso. Uh, so this highlights the structure and it's just a right mouse button, click drag, and you can select various portions of the structures uh, or the whole structure or multiple structures that way. Uh, the other tool I use is this rotate tool. So this will do a 2D rotation um, around the, the structure. So I highlight that and then just pick up a mall, uh, an atom here typically. If it's highlighted, um, you can bring it around like that or go the opposite way. Then the eraser is another tool that I use frequently. This will just erase a, a portion of the molecule. Of course, always remember that you have undo and, and redo. So if you want to hit control Z a couple times to get back uh, two steps from the delete. If you double click uh, the whole molecule using the uh, eraser tool, that will delete everything. It will control Z's to get the molecule back. Uh, this torsion rotator is something I use quite a bit. So if you just hover over a bond, you'll see this red line. And if my cursor's on this side of the red line and I click, it'll rotate that portion of the molecule. Whereas if I move it a little bit over here, it, now it's rotating that little uh, methyl group there. Uh, we also have a nice cleanup tool here, uh, which is this one. You would just select a molecule and clean it up. Let's make a little bit bigger uh, molecule here so we can uh, kind of clean this one up differently. So one of the cleanup things once I've joined that is you can select just a, a portion of the molecule and clean it up. Um, so that allows that, that cleanup. So that's nice if you're modifying a piece of the molecule and uh, you want to keep the rest of it like it is fixed and then modify just a portion of that. So let's take that back into AdMet Predictor. 
uh, I'm going to transfer. Now, when this button comes up, uh, notice that I didn't modify the name. I can go in here and click this, and it'll assign a unique name to that. So uh, that's another way to add a, a unique structure. And then if I want to come in here, I could uh, just edit this little cell to give it a, a new name there. Now I just want to show one more tool within MedChem Designer and I'm going to open up the Demo 2D database again and bring it in here. And then I'm going to do a quick search for compounds that end in uh, azine. And it shows uh, 10 of those. These are, excuse me, eight of those. Uh, these really aren't uh, of the structural type I want. So I'm just going to uh, highlight all these. These have this uh, two phenyls and then this uh, nitrogen uh, sulfur kind of bridging them. And it will take these into MedChem Designer. Now, if for, let's say I wanted to orient these all in the same way, and I wanted it such that uh, this uh, tricyclic ring was kind of down towards the bottom and aligned in this way. Uh, then I could, uh, so I want to orient the top the, the one in the upper left hand corner and uh, highlight all the compounds and what I'm going to do is I'm going to align so I go to a structure align and by common scaffold and so it takes this uh, three membered ring and aligns those on, on top of each other and that's just a little tip for aligning your molecules uh, if you want to see them in a certain fashion. In this last section I'll discuss querying. First I'll discuss text queries then discuss the query wizard and how you can perform substructure searching within the query wizard. So the first example will be uh, just text searches. So that's under edit, find text. I also use control F. This will bring up this dialog box, which I used previously to find compounds that ended in uh, or contained the phrase A-Z-I-N-E. Change this to find more like uh, steroids. So I'm going to put in uh, e R L N. So you can sh you can select any field here. So you can search any text field. You can also use it for numeric fields where it's just an integer. So this would search some of these. So these would show up on this dialog box. I'll go for the identifier. Uh, you can do case sensitivity. So if you wanted uh, just things to match capital E R O N E, you could do that. Allow a partial match search. That's what I want in this particular case because I want to just kind of match the end of that. Uh, if you turn that off, uh, you can. Um, it has to be an exact match. Search selected. There's nothing selected now, but if you had done a previous query and then you wanted to search within those query, and then also do not select any items. So again, if something was already uh, selected and you don't want to unselect that, you could just click that button. So clicking OK, this will find uh, compounds that end in E-R-O-N-E. -E, and I'll just quickly go up to here and hide everything that's not selected. And then you'll see that these phrases will be in uh, these compounds somewhere. Now the other option to search is to bring up the query editor. So this is query by structure or property. I also use control Q often. This will bring up this dialog box. So let's go into, let's just do a text search. We'll clear the old field and you can simply type in uh, command. So one, one command is to look for rows that uh, have a missing value. So for example, this uh, field here, external path, path dash path, passive, uh, has this cell blank. Let's see how many other cells are blank. So I would just type in the name of the attribute, type in equal and an M. So this M keyword is a keyword for missing in fields that have this uh, real example. So this would just highlight the ones that are missing. There's quite a few missing. There's 95 selected. So 95 out of the 104 rows have a missing um, experimental PEF passive field. So now let's do a little bit more complicated uh, query. So again, I'll hit control Q here to bring up this and I'll go into the query wizard. So this brings up a dialog box where you can build your own queries. And in this example, I'm going to look for experimental log P that is greater than two and experimental or log P that is less than three. So that just builds the dialog box here. You can also save this to a file 
So that would save to a file. You could later load that query and re resubmit that query. So then I'll click OK. It builds the query here. Clicking OK just selects those. So again, let me use Control Shift Hide, which will only display the rows that were selected. And you see the experimental solubility. Our experimental log P goes from two to three in this particular subset. Now I'll go ahead and do Alt Control Unhide, and it'll unhide everything. And then finally, I want to show how you can use the query wizard to do a substructure search. So when you hit Control Q, it brings up this dialog box. We could click on MedChem Designer to bring up MedChem Designer. And then I'm going to show, uh, search for a simple uh, pyrazine ring here. So I would just enter the query, then transfer it back. And it'll show you a picture of the query. If you hit the text button, it shows the uh, smart string that it's uh, executing to find these compounds. And you could edit this at this point if you wanted to. I'll click OK, and it highlights uh, just a single compound. And also you notice that it highlights the substructure in red. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please send me an email at mlawless at simulations-plus.com. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.